every day across the nation. About 79 people receive organ transplants, but an average of 18 people die each day while waiting for those transplants because of a donor shortage. Right now in Utah, more than 800 people remain on the waiting list to get an organ transplant. Benjamin Matson joins us from the Intermountain Medical Center Transplant Program. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm glad you, to be here. Think, and you knew Brock personally, and your goal is to make sure that stories like Brock's don't keep happening over and over again. Yes, that's correct. Um, it breaks our heart when we lose one of our patients due to an organ shortage. That's one of the biggest hurdles that uh, the transplant community has to overcome is a shortage of organs. So there are all these people on a waiting list. Why aren't there more organs available for them? Well, um, a lot has to do with becoming a registered donor. Um, th so far, there's about 100 million donors that are registered in the United States. And the population of the United States is about 320 million. Wow. So less than one third of all the United States population are registered donors. There seems to be kind of that fear part of it. When you talk about any medical procedure, people having to go to the doctor, a lot of people are going to shy away from that. There is a risk, though, involved. Especially for elective surgeries. Anytime you undergo a surgical procedure, there is a theoretical risk. Um, but that's minimized due to the, you know, the technique of the surgeons and the post-op care that they receive. There was a, a study um, from the New England Journal in uh, 1997 stating that uh, living donation for kidneys, the outcomes of those donors are no different than the general population. Got it. So you won't be better off or worse off than somebody else. Why is that um, donation so important to the person who's, who's on that waiting list? Is this kind of their last resort? Absolutely. There's a reason why they call it end-stage organ failure, it's because this is their last hope to continue their life. With, with uh, kidney failure, they can remain on dialysis for a cer certain period of time, um, but that shortens their lifespan altogether. And with liver failure, there is no uh, artificial machine that can prolong uh, liver failure. So uh, getting these people transplanted in a timely fashion is very important. You can be a living donor or you can donate after life. How can someone do either one? <clears throat> That's correct. Uh, the deceased or the cadaveric donors, um, you can go to yesutah.org and become a, a donor. You can also do it when you renew your driver's license. Um, it's also very important to remember uh, that when you do become a donor, even though you are uh, signing the paperwork to let your family members know in your living will right. um, or advanced directives that you do want to become a donor as well. This is what you want to do. That's well, correct. we just had it up on the screen, a link to Intermountain Medical Center's transplant um, services program. That's how you can read more information, find out who's in need and how you can help. Thank you so much for joining us, Benjamin. You're I appreciate welcome. your time. Thank you for having me. Brian, back to you.